The Demon Girl Next Door, or Machikado Mizoku, is a magical girl anime centering around 15-year-old Yuko Yoshida, as she is tasked with the murder of a magical girl, so she can break a thousands-year-long curse plaguing her family. This journey starts when Shamiko, as she comes to be known, has her demon powers awakened one morning, and upon starting her quest, she quickly trips down some stairs where she comes face to face with an oncoming truck. No, this is not an isekai, luckily for me, as I would have likely disregarded it, as personally, I don't enjoy many isekai. Though, it may have become one if not for the interference of magical girl Momo Chioda. Are you okay, sir? Huh? I stopped the truck as gently as I could. Uh, yeah? I love anime. When I was younger in middle school, I would spend many nights binge watching any anime that happened to find itself on Netflix. And I probably saw 20 or 30 different shows that I've never heard anyone talk about. That's why I first watched shows like Sekirei, This Ugly Yet Beautiful World, Squid Girl, Noeen, Air Gear, the Full Metal Panic series, both Full Metal Alchemist series, Angel Beats, and so many more. Good, bad, it didn't matter, and usually the weirder the better. I like wild concepts, and if the series was entertaining, I was sold. And while it wouldn't be until years later, I would uh, find the more wild series that I enjoy today, those long past days filled with binge watching whatever I could find helped lay the foundation where I go into most shows with as few expectations as possible. So a few years ago, when I was browsing the web looking for something to do, I stumbled across the first episode of uh, The Demon Girl Next Door, and decided the art looked good and the show sounded interesting, so I gave the show a try, and I've been hooked ever since. Currently, there's two seasons of the show and six volumes of the manga, which, if you want to know the best way to interact with the series, I would have to say, hands down, go for the show. The manga is a four-panel newsprint, so the anime has more time to flesh out everything. It's one of the few shows I'm aware of where I think the anime has an edge over its manga counterpart. <laughs> this is my first victory! I did it! I did it! Now let's take a look at the characters. There's 13 characters that I could go over by the end of season 2 of the series, and I've only read a little of the manga, so I don't know anything after that point. But of those 13, I'm only going to talk about the important ones for season 1. First up, we have Shadow Mistress Yuko, or Shamiko as I will refer to her for the rest of this video. Shamiko is a weak, easily frightened klutz of a succubus that is generally incompetent. She also isn't the brightest bulb in the box, though what she lacks in knowledge she makes up with her emotional intelligence, able to pick up on others' emotional states quicker than most, likely because she is a succubus. Shamiko is also the closest person to being pure-hearted in the anime, despite her bloodline. Magical girl Momo Chiyoda is very much the exact opposite of Shamiko. Where Shamiko is physically and magically weak, Momo is incredibly strong compared to most normal humans. She also is emotionally stunted due to the loss of her adopted sister, who disappeared about a decade earlier. While Momo has a soft spot for Shamiko and her family, Momo isn't the best at actually expressing her emotions, leaving her sounding rather flat and distant. Contrasting with Shamiko's more energetic and over-the-top personality, Momo is also the more devious of the two, being better at uh, knowing how to use Shamiko's little power for evil. That, and she can be pretty manipulative when she wants to be. If you agree, I'll throw in some free bread. How's that? <laughs> Next up, we have Lilith, Shamiko's ancestor that's trapped in a statue. She acts as uh, Momo's punching bag uh, half the time and as the closest thing to an antagonist for the show. Though she is also fairly incompetent and her bark is far worse than her bite. Though she does enjoy pretty much everything she's offered and loves hot springs. The last characters I'll be covering for now are Shami's family and friends. Shamiko lives with her mother Seiko and sister Ryoko, or Ryo. Seiko is a supportive single parent that knows pretty much everything that's going on and gives out answers uh, when the plot needs her to in between being one of the funniest characters on the show and budgeting for their 40,000 yen per month curse. Which, by the way, means that this family of three was living on about $370 a month when the series came out. Today it would be $290. Ryo, however, has an unwavering trust in her older sister, despite definitely knowing how incompetent Shamiko can be. She is actually very talented in comparison, and uh, that's likely because Shamiko has more demon blood in her than Ryo does, leaving Ryo more human and less affected by the curse. And in between researching war and torture methods so that she can become Shamiko's uh, general, Ryo takes an interest in photography and computers. Now, Shamiko's friends aren't as important to the story as the others are. They're secondary to the main plot, usually, and 
first off, you have the athletic Henri, who I'm convinced rivals in Shamiko's misery, as she's the first one to get Shamiko and Momo to interact. She's just constantly pushing the more demon nature as if it was an everyday thing. We also have Sidon Ogura, who is obsessed with the occult and likes to experiment with Shamiko, when she's not breaking into Shamiko's house and living in her attic. There is another character I'll get to later, but for now, let's look into the demon girl next door. So, as Shamiko is about to be whisked off to another world full of fancy RPG mechanics, she's saved by Momo, and I want my money back. I paid to watch this child be murdered by the truck of lazy story writing. Sir, this is a Wendy's. The next day, Shamiko and Momo had their actual introduction, and if you weren't sure this was a comedy anime yet, the quick cut to Momo crouching down to be eye level with Shamiko during her boasting is a dead giveaway. Shamiko, while fighting, quickly runs out of steam and tires herself out against the unmoving Momo. Right after, Momo actually teaches Shami how to throw a punch and... Yeah. You might consider using projectiles. And we get the first use of Shamiko's catchphrase. The first few episodes see Shamiko and Momo start bonding as Momo trains Shami, and successfully guilds uh, Shamiko into not fighting until she repays a small debt. This goes until Shamiko, with the help of her ancestor, invades Momo's dreams in a failed attempt to get Momo to give Shamiko her blood. While her attempt to inception Momo fails, she does happen to cause Momo to fall ill due to her invasion and some fossilizing meat that Momo has been eating for several days. Momo's a bad cook. This causes Shamiko to accidentally obtain some of Momo's blood, and uh, the time for Shamiko to break her family's curse has come. The time has come. <laughs> I, I think I just got an oracle. By the time Momo tracks uh, Shamiko down, her blood is given to Lula's statue, causing her to be able to speak to everyone, and their money curse has been lifted, allowing her family to actually be able to fill their fridge. Hey mom, something's wrong with the refrigerator. I don't think it's cooling. Huh? I wonder if it finally broke down, it is quite old. I said the money curse has been lifted, not their bad luck. Yeah. Sir, for the last time please, harassing the box is a felony. So from here, the series shifts slightly to having Shamiko and Momo be on the same side, as now that Momo is weakened from a magic loss, and Shami is slightly stronger, they team up to protect the city until Momo is back to full strength. Though in the meantime, Momo invites magical girl Mikan to help out. Mikan is the other character I need to talk about. You see, she is under a curse after her father made a deal with a demon. Now, whenever she's in danger or her anxiety spikes, her curse activates, causing havoc on all around her. On the surface, Demon Girl is a slice of life anime, and each episode early on is dedicated to building our characters. The first three building Momo and Shamiko before Momo finds a switch on Lilith's statue that allows Lilith to temporarily possess Shamiko. Then we get some time with Ryo and Shamiko's relationship with her before the first stage of the curse is lifted. Mikan only appears 8 episodes into a 12 episode season. The following episode sees Shamiko and Momo duel in a battle of intelligence to which they both lose to Lilith. Shami should have cheated. Ogre experiments with some weird clay she found from a recipe found on the dark web that will definitely make you want to boil your hands after creating your, your monkey list. And Momo also agrees to become Shami's vassal if Shamiko can defeat her in a fight right before we learn what happened to Shami's father. And this is where you're forced to dive deeper into the story. You see, once upon a time, roughly a decade ago, Joshua, Shamiko's father, became a magic box. Specifically a cardboard box that they use as a table. So that's season one in a nutshell. It's a fairly simple show driven uh, more to comedy, at least until they start diving into the backstory of our main characters, which is the driving force of season two. How did he become a box? Wait, I need closure. Now what makes this series work really is the character interactions between our cast. Johnny Coe, despite being the loudest character and the literal demon girl, is our straight man. She's the only one that seems to recognize that the world around her is completely insane and she's the only one that reacts to it. Every other character reacts as if demons, magic, and world-ending threats are just an everyday inconvenience. Then again, this is Japan. Wait, where does this series take place? Thomas City? That's close enough to Tokyo, right? If you want a good laugh, track down the show. The worst thing I think I can say about it is the dub for the show is oddly named. Majikato Mizoku means street corner demon. The demon girl next door sounds like Shamiko is supposed to be Momo's neighbor, not our main character. 
I'm not sure why this bugs me, but it does. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, like, comment, and subscribe. I want to start tackling more anime in the future and return to some I've talked about in the past. But until then, how about you check out one of my other reviews or I have a new Dungeons & Dragons podcast that you guys should definitely check out on my second channel, The Shadow Dice Podcast. See you guys next time.